So hello everyone. My name is Kim Newton. I'm senior inspector with Ever Living Childcare Team 2 in the Care Inspectorate. We have responsibilities for regulating all daycare children's services um, across the Highlands, Perth and Ross, Angus and Dundee within our team. Care Inspectorate regulates all care services throughout Scotland that meet the criteria stipulated within the Public Service Reform Act. We use a, a variety of documents to help support services to improve quality and meet a certain level of quality. Our focus at the moment is there's a strong focus towards improvement and the improvement agenda. We have colleagues who are part of an improvement team who are available um, for services, for local authorities, who can come out and give extra support in addition to the inspection process. We also work in collaboration with Scottish Government, local authorities, third sector and private sector to look at the, the great quality of care that we already provide. And we use, we use those connections, we work in partnership with people so that we can produce documents that will help support all services. And we're very fortunate in Scotland, as Jackie and Jennifer alluded to earlier, we do have a very high level of services that are operating at good and above. So what does it mean for you and for us, moving forward to 1140? This works. What I'm going to look at today are five key areas. So sleep, rest and activities, shared placements, communication, transitions, outdoor play, which has been spoken about quite a little bit here, with the free flow in that 20% increase as a, as a possibility, the food and drink, meals, snacks and water. Again, if we're looking at the national standard, there's an obligation to provide one meal per day. And staffing. It's already been spoken about, as we mentioned already. What are actually going to happen with the new teams? What's the impact for changes to teams? And of course, recruitment. Now, I'm quite happy for folk to ask me questions at the end of this. I'm going to keep this quite short and sweet, hopefully. Um, and I'm welcome, I'll welcome any questions. I might not be able to give you the answers, but I'll certainly take them on board. So rest and sleep. Ensuring that children have suitable opportunities for rest and sleep throughout the day by providing cosy, nurturing environments where children can feel safe, relaxed and comforted is so, so important. And that is what we are looking for. For all children attending full day care, this is hugely important to promote their health and well-being. You don't have to provide a separate sleep room. That's not expected, especially in funded three to five year olds. However, there should be a quiet area provided for the children where they can snuggle down, they can read that story and listen to soft music, interact with a member of staff on the floor, on the cushions, where it's comforting for them. They have to be able to enjoy a restful and relaxing atmosphere. I've picked out two of the care standards. There's lots of care nas health, national, sorry, start again, health and social care standards. The white book now, rather than the old red book. Two standards that I've picked out that I think are quite appropriate to looking at rest and sleep for children. So my environment has plenty of natural light and fresh air, and the light and ventilation and heating can be adjusted to meet my needs and wishes. So how do we ensure that children do have that nice cosy area. Do we create tents? Do we create dens? I know downstairs, Carla, we're looking to develop a little den area. Actually, that's a superb place for a nice, quiet, cosy area for, for children to relax. I have enough space, physical space, to meet my needs and wishes. This is about meeting the needs of the children and giving them areas, specific areas, where they can cuddle down snuggle down, read that story and rest. It's so important that children get that time to rest. If you're looking at going from sessional three and a quarter hours to full day care, that rest element is so, so important. So if you look at activities, considering, consideration needs to be given to the pattern of attendance of the children. Moving from that sessional part-time care so that full day care needs to be really well organised and thought out. 
Are the same activities and resources available all day? Are they changed around between mornings and afternoons? Are they changed around to meet the individual needs of the children? How do you capture children's interests when they're attending for full days but on different days? How do you capture children's interests when they're attending split placements? These are all questions as practitioners, as managers, as commissioners that really need to be considered for moving forward. Again, if we look at the care standards, I take part in daily routines such as setting up activities and meal times, if that's what I want. So how do we encourage the children to participate in that? How do we give them a voice to be part of that process? As a child, I can direct my own play and activities in a way that I choose and freely access a wide range of experiences and resources suitable for my age and stage which stimulate, stimulate my natural curiosity and learning and creativity. Again, how do we ensure that the child's at the centre of this, how we give them a voice, how we ensure it's of their needs that we're meeting, and that if they're there for a full day, that it's not the same routine morning and afternoon. That the thought goes into what actually is offered to children who are there all day, or for children who are in split placements. Which takes me on to the next one, the shared placements. <laughs> Communication and transition, we need to share information. With the increase to 1140, there will be more opportunities for families to choose how they use the funding. Jackie and Jennifer mentioned earlier about provider neutral. This gives parents that opportunity to make those choices. This may result in more children attending shared placements between two providers and that could be local authority, third sector, local authority, private, or it could include childminders. Questions that we will consider when evaluating the quality within the service is in relation to how is information shared between the placements, how are you ensuring that children's care and needs, learning needs are being continued and developed rather than duplicated. And I think that's really important to remember. If it's a split session, how are you going to share that information so there's an extension of children's learning rather than just a repeat of what they did in the morning? We also need to look at who, when, and how information is shared and how it's gathered from the parents. Who's gathering what information from the parents? So we will look at that as part of our inspection process of how are you communicating with your partner provider with the other split placement. How are you communicating with the parents or the child minder or whoever's dropping off and collecting the children? How is that information really being shared to ensure the needs of the children are being met, keeping the child at the heart of everything? So my personal plan, everyone knows about personal plans, sometimes known as a care plan, is right for me because it sets out how my needs and wishes, well, choices and wishes will be met. Do you share that? Is it an individual one for each service? That's something for services to determine how they're going to take that forward. I can choose from a wide range of services and providers as possible, which have been planned, commissioned, and procured to meet my needs. This is all about choice now. This is about giving parents a choice that's going to be best for their children. But you, as commissioners, as providers, as practitioners, managers, you need to be working together very much in a joined up approach to meeting the needs of the children. And as inspectors, that's what we will be looking at, how well that's working. Outdoor play, very important here in the Highlands, especially up in Wick, where you do get blown away. <laughs> it can happen. <laughs> Expectations for all childcare services is for children to have fun engaging daily outdoor play and learning experiences. This has been promoted for many, many years. It's not something new, it's not something that you don't know about. However, there will be an expectation that the use of outdoors is given greater consideration when working for 11 40 hours. There's a variety of guidance available to support the development of outdoor play promoting the open-ended and imaginative opportunities such as My World Outdoors, Loose Parts Play, Out to Play and Space to Grow. Hi Darren. Hi Darren. 
The benefits and importance of free flow indoor outdoor opportunities where children can make the choices themselves about their, and I'm going to emphasize their play environment. Where, sorry, lost my spot there. And how, they, and how they use the spaces available to them must be highly valued and influence how we support children's health, well being, and safety. There's lots of information today about. Um, risky play, giving children those opportunities, listening to the children, giving them that choice. We really have to drive that forward. And as inspectors, we're looking for that in every service we go into, whether it is a school nursery, private sector, third sector, or child minding setting. We're looking at that everywhere we go. Many folk will be aware of the Space to Grow document and the possibility of increasing capacity by up to 20%. This increase will be considered in services that are able to provide detailed plans of how specific outdoor areas will be used in addition to the current outdoor space to provide an enhanced outdoor provision. It's not an automatic right to increase 20%. There has been a few questions asked in the past about that. It's not just automatic, we've got a big outdoor space, we can have an extra 20%. No. There has to be a very clear plan and schedule around exactly what it is you're going to do. Your 20% is very much about, this is what we do outdoors. This is that mindset that Jackie and Jennifer alluded to earlier. That changing that mindset, this is a purpose to this 20% increase. It's not automatic. You can't just open the doors and say, there we go, that's it. There is information in space to go about that. And I'm happy if people do have more queries, questions about that, I can answer them here or I can speak to downstairs about them as well. So I can choose to have an active life and participate in a range of recreational, social, creative and learning activities every day, both indoors and out. Again, it's the children making that choice. But if we don't offer that choice, how can they have that? As a child, I play outdoors every day. I'm going to use that word again, every day and regularly explore a natural environment that every day, regardless of weather, there is no bad weather, it's bad organisation, bad preparation. If you're up in Wick, if you're up on Thursday, if you're right up on the coast, um, it doesn't matter unless it's very, very unsafe. There might be some very few exceptions, but it would have to be very unsafe. And if it was that unsafe, would the school be operating? Would the service be operating? As always my thought. So just to, just to always bear that in mind. Outdoor play every day. One question to the floor. What would what would you expect three to five year olds physical moderate physical exercise on a daily basis? How long? How long should it be every day? For three to five year olds, moderate exercise, which gets heart pumping. Any any ideas? Yes? Maybe slightly older children, but I think it's four hours. Three, three hours for three to five year olds. So if you think at the moment that a sessional placement at the moment is three hours, 15 minutes, three hours, 20 minutes, three hours of that time <clears throat> might be the only time in that day that a child gets that proper physical exercise, that energy, that release. So if we're moving to 11.40, is it half the day that they're outside? For some children that might be their only opportunity to really get outdoors, be really active, get their heart beat up. Again, have that consideration. Food and drink, we all love a bit of food and drink, especially at half as far as on a Friday. <laughs> Moving to 1140 hours brings additional responsibilities for ensuring that children have sufficient food and water throughout the day. Regular access to water and healthy food is vital for supporting children to grow and learn. Consideration needs to be given to the pattern of children's attendance. Will they be having a snack or a meal at their shared placement? Do you know what that will be? National standard, the national standard, makes reference to the need to provide one meal. It doesn't stipulate which meal that is, just that one meal, meal has to be provided. But you need to ensure that this is nutrition, nutritionally balanced 
and of a high calling. Current guidance that's available to support with menu planning and exploring foods and snacks include food matters and setting the table, which uh, I assume you will all be familiar with. We do have copies of food matters downstairs. So if we're looking at the care standards in relation to food and water and meals, one of the key areas that we look at in every inspection is that children can enjoy unhurried snack, unhurried snack in real times in a relaxed atmosphere as possible. It's not a task-driven process. It has to be a quality experience for the children. Understanding the, the need to have a social experience, a learning experience, a fun experience, whilst actually getting the nutrition. If appropriate, I can choose to make my own meals, snacks and drinks, with support if I need it, and can choose to grow, cook and eat my own food where possible. Building the ambition, planting and growing. Talks about children growing their own food. The health and social care standards talk about children having these opportunities as well now. And I know there's questions around, is it safe for them to plant their, plant their carrot seeds and watch them grow and then cook them afterwards? We are asked those questions regularly. The standards talk about the importance of that and that children should have that choice. And we would encourage you to explore those choices. I can drink fresh water at all times. Children need water. We have a hydration project happening at the moment. You'll be getting information out from us in, in the near future. The importance of children having fresh water all day, every day, cannot be underestimated. These are all stated within the National Care Health and Social Care Standards. I'm, going to, I'm old school, I'm still going to call them the, the National Care Standards. These are all stated within the White Book. They're nothing new, but they're there to help support services. We want to get it right for every child. Jackie and Jennifer spoke about staffing and the difficulties that there can be with recruitment, with staff funding, with payments, with terms and conditions, with people moving from local authority to private, private to local authority. What we will be looking at in the care inspector is that there will be staffing changes. You will need to look at staffing to meet the commitment for our authority. The employment of new staff, trainees and graduates, they may be looked at as part of the inspection process. However, consideration needs to be given to the needs of the children and their pattern of attendance. It all comes back to the child at the centre. We need to ensure that children have that continuity of care, that they're cared for by well-qualified, experienced, enthusiastic and skilled staff. Appropriate staff recruitment is so, so vital. If we don't get that right at the early stage, then it can go quite drastically wrong. Exploring team dynamics, team morale, jobs, ro job roles and responsibilities is such an important factor for managers, for employers, when dealing with such significant changes. When you go from working with two groups of staff, morning and afternoon sessions, to suddenly throwing the group together, it's a completely change of dynamic within that team and you may then start to see some struggles. So how do you support that? I'm asking you lots of questions because it's these questions that you're going to have to think about for the inspection. Because these are the types of questions we will be asking you. So when we look at staffing in relation to the health and social care standards, this is what children should experience a warm atmosphere because people have good working relationships so how do you ensure that when you're bringing in new staff when you're bringing teams together that have never worked together how do you as providers as commissioners as managers ensure that your staff morale your staff are working effectively as a team as a child or young person i feel valued loved and secure and we use that word very strongly and we left that in there quite deliberately about feeling love because it is about the child. The child has to feel comfortable, loved, cared for 
in that environment, but you need good staff in place to support that. I have confidence in people because they are trained, competent and skilled and able to reflect on their practice and follow professional codes of practice. The expectation is that everyone's registered with the triple SC. The expectation is that everyone's qualified, that they're doing training. Jackie and Jennifer spoke about the career pathway opportunities now. Again, we will look at that, we will support you with that, we can direct you with that information. Probably out, probably out doing inspections. My needs are met by the right number of people. That's not just about staffing ratios anymore. That's all about how do we meet the children's needs by having enough staff to do that. So the old one to ten ratio, if you have children who have a higher level of need, then we would expect a higher level of staffing because it's all about meeting the needs of the children. We talk about good quality care, having the right number of staff, having the experienced, skilled, enthusiastic, vibrant staff all comes into that. And it's so important that we get that right. There are some other considerations to think about moving from part-time sessions to full-day sessions, such as children's medical needs. So if you've only offered a part-time session in the past, if you have a child who has um, additional medical needs, taking into account medication guidance, um, so they may require medication just after lunchtime. If that's not something that you've had to do before, you need to upskill your staff and uh, ensure that the child's needs, again, are being met. So, as I said earlier, we produce a number of practice documents um, in partnership with third sector, Scottish Government, voluntary sector and local authorities. So, Health and Social Care Standards, the White Book. This is quite a new one that's come out as well. Um, developing high quality play in mountain environments outdoors. Some people may or may not be aware of that. Safe recruitment. Absolutely vital that everybody is very clear on that. Our creative journey. Food matters. I've included the Scottish Cot Death Association guidance on this as well. They have very good guidance available around appropriate sleep arrangements for children. Um, it's always a sensitive and delicate subject to discuss, but I feel it's really important that folk are aware of that. And it's, we take our guidance from them as well. My World Outdoors and Space to Grow. I have some of these documents downstairs in the atrium. Um, we have with us My World Outdoors, Food Matters, Create Journey and the Health and Social Care Standards. Please feel free to come downstairs and, and take a copy with you. That's our contact details. I've included the hub on there. King Spectra have a, an information hub where you can um, select either adult care services or children's care services and it gives you the plethora of documents that we use, best practice, national, local, um, guidance and it's available they're free. You can go on there you can download and you can use them. Inspections not something that you should be afraid of or worried about. Inspections are about supporting you to do the absolute best you can to ensure you're offering a good quality service to the children in Scotland and we are very passionate about doing that support for you and with you. If you've got a service and you have, you have a named inspector, you can contact your inspector at any time. If it's for a bit of advice, a bit of support, a bit of guidance, we can offer support visits as well. So please do get in touch with us, do share with us. The more you share with us, the more we can support you. Thank you. Any questions?